Queen Freaks and Germaphobes, what's up you guys? Today I'm gonna show you the right way to vacuum. Now I don't in any way want to offend anybody who's been vacuuming their whole lives some way different because any kind of vacuuming on a regular basis is definitely a cleaning win. But I'm gonna show you the way that the experts have found that will clean your home the most effectively and the most efficiently. And hey, when we're cleaning our houses, who doesn't wanna be effective and efficient at the same time? But first, if you're new to Clean Freak and Germaphobe, we love to clean, organize, and disinfect. So if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. It really shows us the love, shows us that you appreciate the content that we're creating. So without any further ado, let's dive in and talk the proper steps to vacuuming your floor. So step number one, before you even start, make sure that the vacuum is gonna work efficiently for you. So you don't ever wanna vacuum if your bag is close to full or all the way full. It's just not gonna work as effectively. It's just not going to suck as well. So always check your bag, always know how full it is. And personally, I don't even like to wait till it's all the way full. If I'm approaching the fill line, I just go ahead and change the bag. So I'm gonna check my bag right now. And I actually just changed it last week. So I already know that it's not very full, um, less than halfway full. So that is good. Make sure your rollers underneath the vacuum are always relatively clean. If it's got too many hairs and fibers on it, it's not gonna pick up as well as if it were all the way clean. To do that, just turn your vacuum over. You can use tweezers. I find scissors to be a little bit more effective to cut off the fibers, pull them out, throw them away, and then your rollers are ready to go. Now that your vacuum is ready to vacuum. The very first step is to clean the corners and it's best to do that with a detailing attachment if you have one. Here I'm using the Dyson handheld cordless vacuum but whatever you have that can really get into the crevice of the corner will work the best. A pro tip is to use baking soda and sprinkle it on your carpet before you start vacuuming. The baking soda does a tremendous job at sucking up odors that can fill your carpet and this will make your carpet smell so much cleaner and fresher. And as you vacuum, you want to work your way back towards that exit point because you never want to walk on the part of the floor that you just vacuumed. Also, and this is very important, you wanna make sure to plug your vacuum in near the exit point or the door that you're leaving out of because you don't want to have to walk across your newly vacuumed floor to unplug your vacuum. Also, that keeps the cord always behind you and never in your way in front of you. As for vacuuming itself, you want to start in the corner and first push the vacuum forward. This pulls all of the fibers up and then you wanna pull the vacuum back over that exact same spot. What that does is now that the fibers are pulled up, that helps to pull up any debris, cat hair, dirt, whatever you have that you're vacuuming up and it will leave the spot cleaner. Then you move on to the next row and you want to overlap your first row by about 50% and you want to repeat that process row by row. I recommend taking your time. If you go over it too quickly, you just aren't gonna pick up as much debris and dirt as if you were to go a little bit more slowly. The next step, if you really, really want your carpets to be extra clean, is to repeat that whole process turning 90 degrees. Yes, you are vacuuming the exact same area twice but turning it the 90 degrees will get up any leftover loose debris or hair or dirt. And it will take your floor cleaning endeavor to the next level, I guarantee it. As a general rule of thumb, if you have a canister vacuum with a hose that attaches to the vacuuming attachment, you wanna have the canister behind you and the main vacuuming attachment in front of you. When you are vacuuming back and forth, I recommend that you use your whole body to step forward and backward to move the vacuum itself and not just moving your arm back and forth. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're vacuuming a large space or if you're vacuuming a lot of rooms, it actually saves a ton of energy. So unless your goal is to get a bicep tricep workout all day, use your whole body to do it. Now, a lot of people will ask, how often should I vacuum? And the answer is, as often as you need it. Some people think every two to three days, some people think once a week. My opinion is, it really depends on how quickly it gets messy. So at my house, I've got four kids, including a toddler, so it gets messy pretty quickly. And if I leave it more than two days, it starts to get pretty dirty. And so for me, vacuuming every other day is really the best to keep my floors looking good. However, if you don't have kids or if you somehow trained your kids to never drop crumbs on the floor, maybe you can get away with less often. So my question for you is, how often do you think it's ideal to vacuum to have your floor look good all the time? Put that in the comment section below. I'd love to get your opinions about that. Now for a couple of pro tips. In order to get those really nice, 
clean cut lines that look so good on a carpet, especially the really plush carpets. I recommend that you start at the 90 degree angle opposite from the direction you're moving out of. Now I'm gonna show you here in this demonstration because I know that sounds confusing, but that way you still go over the carpet in opposite directions, but the second direction is the direction that you are moving away from. If you repeat that process, you'll have those nice clean cut lines throughout the whole room all in one direction and it looks so great. Even if you only get to enjoy it for a minute or two before the kids mess it up. But that's totally fine. It's fine. It's fine. One extra pro tip, be careful of your cords when you're going around corners. Sometimes these cords, if they pull on your white molding, can leave little scuff marks. So just be aware of that to help keep your molding clean too. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, it means the world to us if you give it a thumbs up, if you hit subscribe, if you share it with anybody that you think would enjoy this video or would be helpful for them. We really appreciate all of our viewers and all of our subscribers, so thank you for your support. At the end of this video, I'm gonna link to our tutorial on how to properly mop a floor. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to click on that video and we'll see you over there.